Hey guys, my name is Patrick and being stuck in quarantine really sucks and it's given me so much time to go online and just buy some really useless things. And simply because I was bored, I came across um, 3D printing, which I thought was pretty interesting since it allowed you to design and pretty much print anything you really wanted as long as you could design in the first place or if a design already existed online. But having no engineering or design background, I wondered how hard it would be to set up a 3D printer at home. Upon doing some research, found out that the first generation Ender 3 only costs around $150 US. And the one that I ended up ordering uh, was the Ender 3 uh, V2, which cost me about $230 US, which has a newer screen, um, a glass bed, as well as some nifty upgrades that uh, is already included out of the box. So anyways, let's start this video and let's go and build it. Right, so everything's out of the box now and we have to assemble it. So the base unit comes pre-assembled with the power supply uh, power supply unit and the drawers already, everything's in place, but everything else that goes on top of it needs to be um, assembled. So this isn't a simple plug and play unit, but if you like IKEA furniture, then it shouldn't be too too difficult to do. So what I'm gonna, uh, what my plan is to use some YouTube videos of people uh, assembling this as guidance as well as um, looking at the instruction manuals. Apparently the USB that's included with the SD card also has a video of um, a Creality um, official video which they kind of go through the assembly process as well. But um, I'll see how it goes and apparently it should take only one hour to build this printer. So the time now is 8.22pm so I'll see uh, how long it takes me to build it. All right, so let's go. Nice. Okay, so good news, the whole thing's assembled and it looks like it's printing stuff. So bad news is, well, I spent 
freaking forever trying to level the bed. It does take some time and some patience, so ideally you want to have like a whole day where you're just messing with this. So I have a whole day off tomorrow, so I'm just going to be working on this whole day. Um, yeah, so there's so many things that as a beginner you don't really know and you get super confused. Having a video a tutorial on building this was super helpful. Links in the description down below. Amazing video. Looking at the instruction manuals, you 100% would be super confused. Um, but yeah, I got this. I think this machine. Oh, well, you can probably build it in about an hour or two, and that's pretty accurate. Uh, especially if you're not filming and you know, and you have like a bigger desk, and you can organize all your stuff better. Okay, so let's go on to tomorrow and let's see if this print turns out successful or not. Okay, so it's actually been about a week since my first print and it turned out okay. So as you can see that, I'm not sure if it's gonna focus or not, but overall the print quality is pretty decent for first print. I didn't even look at the slicer settings properly, which is the software that basically tells the printer how to print this specific uh, item out. I didn't really look at it, I just put it in the Creality Slicer and just went with the default settings and this is what came out, which is pretty good. This is the first Benchy I printed and apart from the, the spots on the side of the boat and the base, so the bed wasn't completely level, everything else turned out pretty pretty good. So I'm pretty proud, proud about that. And like I said previously, the videos help out a lot, it's just simply better than Having, uh, going through an instruction manual. I did cross check it to make sure that I wasn't missing out anything. So um, go ahead and use the videos if you're building this printer. Also like to mention that Creality does provide all the tools required and there will be some extra tools, uh, not tools, but parts at the end. So you don't have to worry about that. There is an extra nozzle and uh, I think this is like a coupling kind of, a coupler or something. I'm not really sure what that is, but it goes on the, um, the Bowden tube. So there are a couple of things that I realized um, that weren't really clear when I was building the printer. So leveling the bed, there are four springs on each corner and the, the bottom, the far left one, I thought there, was, there wasn't any springs because it was wound up all the way to the top and I thought it was just a plastic piece. Turns out there is a spring inside. Another point to mention with the bed is you have to feel resistance when moving the paper under the nozzle. That's when you get better contact with the bed. If, if you're just moving the piece of paper under the nozzle and you can't feel anything, then your the nozzle is way too high and you need to lower it or raise the bed up. And it does take some time to get used to, but after you get the feeling, um, you can level the bed no problem every time. Another point I like to mention is I like to hand tighten a lot of the screws before using the tools to screw them down. This just allows for better alignment and it turns out that it's just better put together if you use, um, if you use your fingers to hand tighten the screws first before you use the tools. Make sure you check the voltage. The voltage is extremely important. So where I live, I need 240 volts. So make sure you have that set. Or if you're in the US, make sure you're at 120. One thing that I caught myself doing was looking at upgrade parts before the printer even arrived. So I think you should honestly just play with the printer first and see what you actually need before just upgrading loads of parts. Understanding the stock machine and then slowly upgrading it will be better, I think. And it would save you some money as well. If you're not going to use the upgrade part, why would you buy it? And out of the box, the Ender 3 is pretty capable. It has printed some pretty cool stuff. So it's got the bench sheet here. I got this uh, tool, uh, this part for one of my flight sim gear. Printed some threads. This is actually attached to the Zoom H1. So I can put it on my tripod. Uh, sorry, not my tripod, but the horseshoe mount on my camera and even some cool designs. So out of the box, the Ender 3 is pretty capable and you can always print upgrade parts for your Ender 3. And that's the beauty of a 3D printer, which I'm already doing, which is going to be the next video as well. And if you're planning on designing a lot of parts to use around the house, I'd recommend getting some calipers. Um, using a ruler is simply uh, not accurate and quite difficult to use. So having some electronic calipers are extremely useful. I put a link in the description if you guys um, are interested in getting some. 
these are extremely useful uh, just to get more precise measurements. So previously I had no experience with CAD software except for Google SketchUp at one point but uh, nothing such as Autodesk, uh, Fusion 360 or even FreeCAD or even Tinkercad. I never learned to use soft software like that so it only took me about one week and uh, studying pretty much with YouTube and tutorials and I learned the very basics of FreeCAD which allowed me to design a couple parts to uh, use around the house. Okay so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. If you did then make sure to click that like button down below and subscribe. Next video is going to be about upgrade parts for the Ender 3 that you can actually print out at home so that you won't have to go out and buy those parts. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.